we're coming in now to the prime time of year. It does get very cold at night, but as long as as long as you're prepared, uh, it's it is certainly one of the best times for observing. Depending on the sky conditions, um, you know, obviously whether the moon's around or whatever, um, you're you're just you're observing to to suit. Uh, so if you've got a moonlit, moonlit night, you, you might want to just stick to the lunar and planetary sort of stuff. Uh, but if the moon's out of the sky, then the Milky Way is absolutely fantastic at the moment. Uh, yeah, and it stretches right across the sky, right across, especially the south and uh, east. That's the really good areas for the Milky Way at the moment. The east particularly, uh, we've got that central part of the Milky Way, which we mentioned last month. And that's getting up higher earlier in the evening now. So. Um, becoming very accessible and, and as it gets higher in the sky you, you're looking through less atmosphere so the view is clearer uh, and, and, you know, and brighter uh, so it's fantastic even, even you don't need a telescope too Dave even, even with binoculars um, there's a really great view in that area it's beautiful to look at what about making sense of it what are we seeing when we look at the Milky Way well you're seeing billions and billions of very distant stars so I mean the the nearer part of our galaxy, we see individual stars. That's within what they call the Orion spiral arm, the Orion arm of the galaxy. That's that's our neighbourhood in the galaxy. So we can see individual stars. That's that's usually within a, mostly within a couple of thousand light years or so. But the rest of the galaxy, it, from Earth, it appears as a hazy band of light in the sky. And that's billi as I said, it's billions and billions of much more distant stars. You're talking tens of thousands of light years typically away. Uh, so we just see that as a collective glow. It's like, the best analogy I could use, it's like looking at a huge city from a great distance and you don't see individual street lights, you just see a collective glow. And what if you did want to get particular? What are some of those closer stars can, that we could pick on? Uh, well, I mean, the people, the people tend to spot the bright ones, you know, the one, and the bright ones tend to be, although not always, they, the bright ones tend to be the nearer stars, but some of the brighter stars in the sky are actually quite distant. It's just, it's just they're extremely powerful, so they're visible from a great distance even though they're a long way away. The two brightest stars aren't exactly well placed this month. Uh, that's Sirius, uh, also known as the Dog Star, and Canopus. Though they're very low in the west now, so probably not a good time to see them. But um, the third brightest star is probably better known to a lot of people. That's Alpha Centauri. It's one of the pointers. And that is very well placed. That's high up in the south, beside the Southern Cross to the left or the east. So that one's well placed. Uh, and the fourth brightest star is over in the northern sky at this time of year. That's a star called Antar um, Antares. It's called Arcturus, actually. Uh, and that's the fourth brightest. It's a bright orange sort of coloured star. Uh, and that's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's the brightest of the northern half of the sky, but it's fourth brightest all overall. And now I understand it's a pretty special anniversary this month. Yes, July, uh, yeah, it's, well, probably one of the most famous anniversaries of all. We've got the uh, 40th anniversary of the, of the moon landing, the, well, the most famous one, which is the Apollo 11. But um, that's going to change, it seems. There seems to be a renewed interest in um, going back to the moon for various reasons. Certainly there's a lot of science and potentially down the track they want to set up a base and maybe have some sort of uh, mineral exploration. So I think, I think the moon's going to become quite topical as far as uh, you know, space missions again. So with moon <coughs> consciousness around, what do you find the most interesting 
part of the moon to look at? Uh, well, it's, it's very changeable. Uh, it depends on the phase, you know, the, the amount of light. Uh, it, everything changes all the time. Uh, the best time to look at the moon is probably, well, not full, <laughs> ironically. Uh, I mean, people, a lot of people think the full moon is the best time, but it's, it's actually the worst time, Dave, because there's no shadows. And when there's no shadows, it's, it's hard to sort of get a sense of the features and the relief on the moon. Uh, so the best time to look at the moon is when there's a when you can see the day and night where the day and night side comes together. That area is referred to as the Terminator. I always just say, remember only Schwarzenegger, you'll be right. And yeah, that, that's that's the best area because that's where the sun is at a low angle, and that's where you see the shadows and the and it's very dramatic. The moon. I, 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 the best way I describe it, uh, to me the moon when it's lit like that, it looks like a plaster of Paris model. You know, we do the, I remember doing a school on those plaster of Paris sort of things. And it's a, it looks a bit like that. It's, it's, it's very stark, dramatic, because there's virtually no atmosphere on the moon. So um, it's, it's very different to the Earth, how we see it.